From Loretto Abbey, home to the Sisters of Loretto since 1928, and the Loretto Abbey Secondary School, and with the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. The televising of this Mass is made possible by a contribution from the estate of Rosemary de Silva. This Mass is offered for the souls of John Joseph de Silva and Rosemary de Silva, and for the spiritual welfare of their children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren. Our thanks to our donor for making it possible for thousands of the faithful across Canada to begin a new week with this sacred celebration. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. As we prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let's take a moment to recognize our need for God's grace, God's gifts of healing, reconciliation, and peace. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You intercede for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, by whose wondrous grace we are enriched with every blessing, grant us so to pass from former ways to newness of life that we may be made ready for the glory of the heavenly kingdom. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. Joachim married the daughter of Elkiah, named Susanna, a very beautiful woman and one who feared the Lord. Joachim was very rich and had a fine garden adjoining his house. The Jews used to come to him because he was the most honor of them all. That year, two elders from the people were appointed as judges. These men were frequently at Joachim's house. Every day, the two elders used to see Susanna going in and walking about, and they began to lust for her. Once, while they were watching for an opportune day, Susanna went in as before with only two maids and wished to bathe in the garden, for it was a hot day. No one was there except the two elders who had hidden themselves from watching her. When the maids had gone out, the two elders got up and ran to her. They said, we are burning with desire for you, so give your consent and lie with us. If you refuse, we will testify against you that a young man was with you, and this was why you sent your maids away. Susanna groaned and said, I choose not to do it. I will fall into your hands rather than sin in the sight of the Lord. The next day, when the people gathered at the house of her husband, Joachim, the two elders came full of their wicked plot to have Susanna put to death. Because Susanna's accusers were elders of the people and the judges, the assembly believed them and condemned Susanna to death. Then Susanna cried out with a loud voice and said, O eternal God, you know what is secret and are aware of all things before they come to be. You know that these men have given false evidence against me, and now I am to die, though I have done none of the wicked things that they have charged against me. The Lord heard her cried, just as she was being led off to execution, God stirred up the Holy Spirit of a young lad named Daniel, and he shouted with a loud voice, 
I want no part in shedding this woman's blood. Taking his stand among them, he said, Are you such fools, O Israelites, as to condemn a daughter of Israel without examination and without learning the facts? Return to court, for these men have given false evidence against her. So all the people hurried back, and the rest of the elders said to him, Come, sit among us, and inform us, for God has given you the standing of an elder. Daniel said to them, Separate the men far from each other, and I will examine them. When they were separated from each other, they summoned one of them and said to him, You old relic of wicked days, your sins have now come home, which you have committed in the past, pronouncing unjust judgments, condemning the innocent, and acquitting the guilty. Though the Lord said, You shall not put an innocent and righteous person to death. Now then, if you really saw this woman, tell me this. Under what tree did you see them being intimate with each other? He answered, Under a mastic tree. And Daniel said, Very well, this lie has cost you your head, for the angel of God has received the sentence from God and will immediately cut you in two. Then putting him to one side, he ordered them to bring the other. And he said to him, You offspring of Canaan and not of Judah, beauty has beguiled you and lust has perverted your heart. This is how you have been treating the daughters of Israel, and they were intimate with you through fear. But a daughter of Judah would not tolerate your wickedness. Now then, tell me, under what tree did you see them catch them being intimate with each other? He answered, under an evergreen oak. Daniel said to him, very well, this lie has cost you also your head, for the angel of God is waiting with his sword to split you in two so as to destroy you both. Then the whole assembly raised a great shout and blessed God, who saves those who hope in him. And they took action against the two elders because out of their own mouths Daniel had convicted them of bearing false witness. They did to them as they had wickedly planned to do to their neighbor, acting in accordance with the law of Moses, they put them to death. This innocent blood, thus innocent blood, was spared that day. Elkiah and his wife praised God for their daughter, Susanna, and so did her husband, Joachim, and all her relatives. And from that day onward, Daniel had a great reputation among the people. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus spoke to the people saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Then the Pharisees said to him, you are testifying on your own behalf. Your testimony is not valid. Jesus answered, even if I testify on my own behalf, my testimony is valid because I know where I have come from and where I am going. But you do not know where I come from or where I am going. You judge by human standards. I judge no one. Yet even if I do judge, my judgment is valid. For it is not, not I alone who judge, but I and the Father who sent me. In your law it is written that the testimony of two witnesses is valid. I testify on my own behalf, and the Father who sent me testifies on my behalf. Then they said to him, Where is your father? Jesus answered, You know neither me nor my father. If you knew me, you would know my father also. Jesus spoke these words while he was teaching in the treasury of the temple, but no one arrested him because his hour had not yet come. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The first reading, in the first reading, the wisdom of Jewish courtroom practices is made evident to us, the practices for determining the truth. Two witnesses must agree on whatever matter is being discussed in order for the truth of that matter to be established. And so Daniel is able to save Susanna because he can show that the accounts of the two old men, the two witnesses who have testified against her, do not agree. In the gospel, the conflict between Jesus and the authorities is coming to a climax. They are refusing to accept that Jesus is who he claims to be. And so they invoke that same principle of proof that we have seen at work in the first reading. Jesus has not brought forth a second witness to verify his own claims to have been sent by God as the light of the world. Jesus replies by pointing to the miracles that he has been performing, the miracles that have accompanied his preaching, his claims. Such works, he is saying, can only be the work of God. They are signs that God is using to bear witness to the truth of Jesus' claims to have been sent by God. To bring, to bring in God's kingdom of mercy, reconciliation, and justice. In our own lives, are we attentive to the signs God gives us that bear witness to his love for us and his labors on our behalf? Let us ask for eyes and hearts that are open to see the fruits of God's love in our lives that we might respond to his loving call. And so we bring our prayers to God. In this time of Lent, let us pray that we might have the grace to recognize the signs that bear witness to God's love at work in our hearts and around us in the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. Let us pray that we would respond generously and with renewed energy to the cry of the poor and vulnerable around us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, and for our government leaders as they craft a new law governing end-of-life issues in Canada, we pray to the Lord. Lord Gracious and loving God, grant us what we truly need, that your glory may shine forth in our lives and your gospel may be preached to the ends of the earth. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed 
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Yes. Pray, friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that preparing to celebrate the holy mysteries, we may bring before you as the fruit of bodily penance a joyful purity of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For through the saving passion of your Son, the whole world has received a heart to confess the infinite power of your majesty since by the wondrous power of the cross, your judgment on the world is now revealed and the authority of Christ crucified. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, 
O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And we pray for the coming of God's reign as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of God. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer one another a sign of that peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. For those of you at home, join me in this prayer for grace. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found, was blind, but now I see. Twas grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear, the hour I first believed. Through many dangers, toils, and snares, I have already come. Tis grace has brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead me home. Amen. Let us pray. Strengthened by the blessing of your sacraments, we pray, O Lord, that through them we may constantly be cleansed of our faults and by following Christ, hasten our steps up to, upward toward you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads for a blessing. Set free from their sins, O Lord, we pray, the people who call upon you, that living a holy way of life they may be kept safe from every trial through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit 
come upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, proclaiming the gospel by your living. Thanks be to God. Our thanks to our donor for the gift of this Mass. If you'd like to sponsor a Mass or share in sponsoring a Mass, please call our office at 1 888 383 6277 for details. 